cuts out again and does that. It's so weird. Try take two. There we go. We're back. Weird. It said I had five viewers, then now down to two, maybe three. Very strange. Anywho, uh, starting five minutes early tonight. Uh, sadly, Campbell wasn't feeling well, so we had to cancel the stream on his channel. And uh, hopefully he's better by next week so we can start doing our weekly alternative history podcast again. Uh, that said, tonight's going to be a rather short one, but it's going to be an epic one. Uh, I've got lined up a few video clips from some of the other great uh, channels researchers in this Tartarian field. Uh, Jared Booster's clip we're going to play of where he shows the forbidden city in Beijing that used to be known as Peking, China, uh, before uh, in the era of Pekin, China, that the actual walls around the uh, Forbidden City in Beijing, the most uh, holiest or ancient castles of royalty within the Chinese uh, mainland and empire, uh, were called and labeled the Great Wall of Tartaria, uh, right inside, and the walls of Tartary, uh, inside Peking, China, which is now Beijing, China. Uh, we will also be playing some clips of uh, some of me and Campbell's previous works, uh, including our first stream, The Great Wall of Tartaria, where we go through Olaf the Sverker's uh, work, and I will be playing uh, one of his videos as well, showing <clears throat> this Great Wall of Tartary or a Great Wall of Starforts that... Uh, we have discovered and originally Olaf has discovered and I believe uh, Colm Ginley channel as well has gone over it uh, in the past. But it is this wall of star forts that goes from the Black Sea, from the Sea of Azov, uh, well, on the west coast of it actually, it goes around the Dnieper River and then up from in the middle of Ukraine, uh, the current conflict zone, the city of Dnieper and it goes across and then th east northeast throughout all of uh, eastern Ukraine crosses over Russia and all the way northeast through Siberia to the um, Siberian Arctic Ocean what used to be called the um, Sea of Tartar the Sea of Tartaria so uh Without further ado, I will play some of those for you. And at the very end, a special Brucey bonus update of a special guest we've got lined up coming for you in a future episode, the part two of Is America Egypt with Harry Hubbard and his Illinois cave finds and golden tablets that he's discovered. So let me know how if the sound is working as I get this fit. Oops, wrong one. As I get the video clip going, um, we will start with Jared Booster's Forbidden City uh, video of the Great Wall of Tartaria. And yeah, let me know what you think. What, what made this palace off limits? And why was this history? Unlike so many others that we've accounted for already, which seem to be forgotten or built over top of, why was the Forbidden City specifically allowed to remain relatively intact and unchanged for over 500 years, even keeping the revealing nature of the name in most of the history books? The Tartar Wall, the Tartar Palace. Isn't this the history that the proverbial powers that be don't want us to acknowledge or recognize? I've accumulated for you today the oldest known photographs 
of the Forbidden City and the surrounding fortifications of Beijing. We'll be looking at roughly 65 pre-1900 photographs of the Great Forbidden City, and I'll discuss briefly the main points of note within the current narrative as it's presented today. This is absolutely a superstructure, and I'll also try to point out the inconsistencies or issues that I have with the narrative. So let's get right into it. First, within the city limits of what is today Beijing, is both the Forbidden City to the north or built on top of the earlier constructed and larger Kanbalik. Both the Forbidden City and Kanbalik sit within the four major builds that make up modern day Beijing, meaning that Beijing was built out in a set of four unique fortifications, Kanbalik being one of the earliest, once home to Zongdu, which was the capital of the Jurchenjin dynasty. It's strange how Jurchenjin and this name sounds very similar to the name of the Teutonic Order leader, who basically was indeed fractured from the inside if it was infiltrated by a nefarious sect or organization looking to undermine the history and control the narrative. And if so, when this occurred, was this nefarious force eventually hear the same names being involved here. Saka, Sakai, Hun, Han, Kelt, Tartar, Mound Builder. These are all names, in my opinion, to an overarching group of the first men, Proto-Indo-Aryans. Red-headed giants and burial mounds found in both China and the USA. Tartar, Scythian, Celts. Elongated skulls found in Africa and South America. Berber, Indo, Scythians. Moorish revival architecture found all around the world. Berber Tartars or Celtic Tartars. Irish Round Towers or Irish Fire Towers. Celtic Indo Aryans. We can go on and on like this literally throughout the annals of history. The overarching narrative being all around the world is evidence of a proto language and a proto religion stemming from the first men of northern Tartary. However, we also have scholarly pursuits that were almost always funded by the church systems that went to go to the areas looking to discredit the idea that this proto pagan sort of people really made the basis for society as we know it today, seemingly highlighting the differences between the first men and modern day Abrahamic religion. These first men were not divided by any means or categorized by their language or color or size or ethnicity because these first men predated the concept of these things before their differences, before differences were even a thing. Language and numbers, cornucopia of information that can be relevant to the world that we live in today. It can be relevant to depictions of this ancient forbidden city and indeed of Kanbalik in general. We note that the massive retaining walls here, the walls which, like the Great Wall of China, held the utmost importance both defensively and strategically, the walls of the Forbidden City, and indeed the entire castle-like structure surrounding it, were regarded as Tartar or Tartarian. This Tartar Wall and the Tartar Palace, the Forbidden History, the Forbidden Palace, what exactly make this history forbidden? What made this palace off limits? And why was this history, unlike so many others that we've accounted for already, which seem to be forgotten or built over top of, why was the Forbidden City specifically allowed to remain relatively intact and unchanged for over 500 years, even keeping the revealing nature of the name in most of the history books? The Tartar Wall, the Tartar Palace. Isn't this the history that the proverbial powers that be don't want us to acknowledge or recognize? I've accumulated for you today the oldest known photographs of the Forbidden City and the surrounding fortifications of Beijing. All right, so sorry, I'm on a bit of a time crunch here, so we're only going to keep it five minute uh, episodes. I just posted the link here for everybody to go check out the full video and make sure you give a like, subscribe to Jared, and let him know we sent you. Uh, we're supposed to be doing a stream with him at some point in the near future as well. So, for the next uh, part, also a future upcoming episode with. Uh, 
good old Olaf, Olaf the Sverker. He's uh, in uh, Scotland, I believe. A uh, good friend and channel researcher. He's also of Russian heritage and descent, so he gets a lot of uh, the translations and finds out of these Slavic, uh, Russian, um, Tartarian areas and finds that uh, nobody else really has. But that's a story for another day. This is the Great Wall of Tartaria part, uh, the Great uh, Star Fort Wall coming up from, as Olaf has here, uh, Mark Doat and me and Campbell and our Tartaria stream as well, still available on Autodidactic Channel. Uh, we went and recreated and found all of these star forts and this giant star fort wall going through from the Dnieper River all the way up east into Siberia. So uh, right here, we will play a bit of Olaf, uh, the Sverker's original video on this uh, topic and discovery. And I thought we could take a look at some Ukrainian star forts now. I may as well get through these whilst I have some time. The kids staying with my mum, so I have a wee bit of free time on my hands. And this time we are, like I said, we're in Ukraine, and I thought we would work our way down this defensive line this time. Once again, I've not planned this video out in the slightest, however, we will more than likely find a fair few interesting things. Right now, he's on the Dnieper River by Dnipro City itself, going up from there. The remains of an ancient star fort that again has been more or less flattened by this point in time. With what a, a, a certain new American president has uh, engineered in Ukraine at the moment, perhaps the beginnings of a, 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 another world war. Uh, this might be the last time we get to see or and notice how he's saying this this was recorded a year year and a half ago long before the war broke out and again here we can see yet another massive star fort on this this uh, coastline just a bit make out petal one two three four and five a massive star fort again i didn't need to mention the the, the level of effort that would have to be undertaken to create these structures and uh, I, I don't believe I need to talk about how unnatural this area here looks. I think I've spoke about enough bombardments and blasts so I'll, I'll leave your imagination up to tell to, to, to work out what created this scenery. Uh, did we start off here? Have we looked at this one? Again, I'm more or less fairly flattened star fort by this point, but we'll, we'll get back to this defensive line quickly. As you can see, they, they clearly form a cohesive line. Or, when I say a defensive line, it could just as well be a, an energy line, uh, like reminiscent of how we, we stagger our modern-day power lines and pylons it. So we'll start here at point three six one. And today there is barely nothing that we can see. However, if we have a look at some of the old photos, we can see that clearly marked as a star fort. You can just about make it the petal in these photos. The petals being here. And I don't know if you can you can wrap your head around the level of effort that would have to have to be undertaken to create these structures. not enough time to deal with ads um so what it was starting to show there was the great wall of the star forts uh i suggest you check out um olaf's stream him itself uh or two videos three videos actually on that uh the link i just posted uh right here for the full video uh next up is part two of me and campbell's um great wall of tartaria series that uh, we'll be doing i guess this is part two point and a half or three and a little bit but part, real part three is coming uh with campbell hopefully next week uh the, so this one was called ancient structures of russia um and we're showing the Baltic Sea area by Kaliningrad region and by uh, St. Petersburg region and how they there's a ancient 
uh, Starfort Canal system from this area that goes all the way through Moscow and then connects down through the Dnieper River, where uh, the last video just was with uh, the other Great Wall of Star Tartaria area. But that's also a straight line. The thing is, who's right? Uh, who who built? Oh, and there's another. What? what uh, oh, that looks like a sunken star fort in the middle. Places like ankle. And look at this thing and this cross. I can't zoom in because I don't think it's on the ground. Oh around it around the cross which is interesting because it's it's in a square um oh it's not gonna let me We're go forward okay, i'm gonna have to exit but we got in we got inside before in into this cathedral oh, let's see which, oh yeah it's just insane in there like the gold tablets oh. hanging everywhere oh above. look at that now, but look at the domes. It's just ridiculous. Of course, it's all organized. Um, yeah, these these massive chandeliers. Um, oh, just above Poland. Well, yeah, below above Poland and below Lithuania. Um, it's the one. Is I think I did a, I think I did a video on on the Capitolicious a while back. It's a really nice one. And isn't it interesting that in that part of the world seeing star forts, but we don't see the walls. There must have been walls there too. Right. too. And but in Russia it's just all pretty much, isn't it? Unless it's in the middle of a city. It's it's yeah. But look at this wall, it just goes forever. It just keeps on going. And this is so those canals we've that we've looked at. Like the amount of work to go into this is just it's, like, it's, there's no way they could explain. And to claim that it was done pre-industrial revolution, like technological wise, it's just it's insanity. Like it's plain ignorance and stupidity. Really, because it, it is. it's impossible. Look at the it's, straight lines in it. Like the straight lines are ridiculous. And again, there you go. There's a bit of. Oh, he's got a. Yeah, here, oh, here it's actually up above up. ground, like a deserty camps. area. Uh, look at mm. that. That's actual wall now above the ground built. Like we need to find, be able to go out there and get someone to take pictures and maybe samples of it to see what sort of composite material it truly is and the height of it. And mm. it's and also, it's, um, you know, there's got to be a lot more walls him. around. Right? Got to be walls around everywhere under the ground. Like even like that that um Wall Street. It's, it's called Wall Street because it was a, the wall, the boundary of, of the walled the city. Wall of the star port. The star city, right? No, every city's got to have them. They just, the foundations, you know, at least some of the foundations have still got to be there. We need like hands. Can you get them so you can walk around like a metal detector but just look under the ground? <laughs> right. That's an interesting question. We got to get Paul Cook on. I'm going to email him again and get him on for next week same time i guess we can right. turn this into weekly monday Tuesday, yeah yeah uh, thing because he yeah. he's figured out how to use the lidar integration uh system or service through google earth i believe but uh, he's been using it pretty good in some of the areas that he's been exploring recently and uh we yeah. should actually once done playing this little segment uh, show a little bit of Paul's most recent Malta Star Fort Star City uh, video, where because he lived in Malta for a couple of years, and actually yeah, he did a lot of video uh, where mm. he 
All right. Sorry about that. So uh, this is the link uh, to watch that two or three hour awesome stream uh, on the Great Wall of Tartaria that me and Campbell have done in the past and that uh, we will be doing a part three of in the next week or two. Also, uh, in the next week or two, we will be having Harry Hubbard, which the clip is our Brucey bonus. But before that, here is a short clip of Wide Awake that I was on this weekend. <laughs> now that would be great. Illuminati confirms. Illuminati confirmed. Okay. Can't stop me. You will talk to them, paper. <laughs> Pragmatic. Be careful, they're gonna take a scan of your eye. Yeah. Uh, I like to get it sad. You all saw my pores, let's see your pores. Wishing that the gas prices wasn't so high. The lust of the money would make you hollow. You are back. Sometimes success is deceiving to the eye. Cause people say they rich when they just get it by. Television make you think it's something you can buy. But before you get the truth, you gotta sort through the lies. Choose your own path and walk on by. The only true failure is if you don't try. All right. So also on my channel, it's a four and a half hour video, the Wide Awake show that I did uh, with Richie 007 of the Magic Tree House channel. He's also lost his channels a couple times, just like me rebuilding. Uh, wonderful Esra of Mindful Exposures. Uh, we were joined by also, I, oh, I don't want to slaughter his name. It was like Esh News. Uh, a Israeli guy news channel, um, and of course, uh, Callum from Australia, as well as Roxy uh, and her channel from the UK for a little bit. It was quite awesome, quite awesome. So finally, the Brucey bonus for the day, because eventually we will have Paul Cook back on again. Um, but I was talking to Harry Hubbard today and emailed I'm writing him an email here tomorrow to uh, confirm which week we're going to have him on for part two, where Harry Hubbard will be showcasing his own uh, collection and artifacts that uh, we did in me and Campbell's uh, <clears throat> first episode is North America, Egypt. Uh, these are some of the artifacts, such as this golden tablet, and there's many more of them that Harry Hubbard uh claims to have found and has in his collection from the Illinois caves. And I bring up this exact same point that uh, Terry's guest just brought up of how and why would people use these dead languages that nobody, like the average person is completely clueless on how to work, how to use it, how to like a single word, yet alone be able to write and forge and fake entire uh, sentences, stories, and mm. uh, fables grammatically mm. correct to these lost languages. It, it just, it's impossible. The, the claim and like it's the ridiculous. statistical probabilities are impossible that someone would and not just someone, each mm. individual different groups of each time they claim that one of these is a forgery, that each individual would take the time to learn the lost languages and then uh, carve them correctly into these supposed frauds. It's just, it's impossible. Exactly. And so then if, once if again, you, why would you put that much time into anything and then just like kill yourself? Self, you know, like kill your career, learn, learn an ancient language, and then just put out something fake. I mean, it's just dumb. It just um, it makes zero yeah. sense. And then once again, we have these proto Sumerian proto, um, like that was right, Rome. There was no boats or international travel or cross. All right, sorry, we're running out of time. Um, 
There's the full video right there of uh, that two and a half hour stream. I think it's already at a, almost 20,000 views on Autodidactic channel. And to the very last show, uh, the highlight here, this is Harry Hubbard's YouTube channel itself where he has all sorts of videos on uh, the different golden tablets and different artifacts that uh, he's found in this Illinois cave and that we are going to be having him on for a part two uh, coming up uh, in the next couple of weeks. So uh, on that note, uh, I got to go. A lovely Amber is waiting for me to pick her up, and we can't keep her waiting downtown by the train. That's no good. So love you all. We'll see you on the next one. Have a good one.